Hello and welcome to Right Now for Friday the 8th of December 2017. I'm Tim Wilms. Well, it's happened now. Same-sex marriage was passed into law yesterday by the House and received royal assent from the Governor-General this morning. It looked as if the passage of the law would be derailed by citizenship matters. However, the House spent the entire day considering the proposed amendments, none of which were passed, and many people still have concerns about the impact this legislation will have on religious freedom. Only four voted against the final bill. However, many more abstained, including Tony Abbott, Scott Morrison and Andrew Hastie. The gallery was packed with same-sex marriage advocates who were quite noisy in the House throughout the day. Malcolm Turnbull has uh, clearly been wanting to own this legislation and believes he is finishing the year on a high. No doubt the problems that have plagued his government will return in 2018. While the passing of the same-sex marriage legislation has dominated the news cycle and the minds of most MPs in the Parliament, another important piece of legislation was introduced in the House immediately following the marriage vote. This was the legislation to establish the new Home Affairs Department that was announced earlier this year that will be headed by Immigration Minister Peter Dutton and will encompass the Australian Federal Police, the Domestic Spy Agency, the Australian Security and Intelligence Organisation and the Australian Border Force. It proved to be a divisive shake-up and was seen more through the prism of Malcolm Turnbull trying to shore up Peter Dutton's support for his leadership. On the face of it, it makes sense to have one department oversee all of our law enforcement and security agencies. If Malcolm Turnbull is able to successfully oversee this reform, it would certainly give him another symbolic change, like same-sex marriage, that he can say was introduced under his prime ministership. The New South Wales State Government is receiving widespread criticism for its plans to knock down Sydney's two major sports stadiums, ANZ Stadium in Homebush and Allianz Stadium in Inner Sydney's Moor Park, and rebuild them without actually increasing their capacity at a cost of $2 billion to taxpayers. The two stadiums have both had a lifespan of less than 30 years. Premier Gladys Berejiklian is facing a backbench revolt. Opposition leader Luke Foley has highlighted how many schools and hospitals could be built for $2 billion, and a petition against the stadium rebuilds has already gained over 130,000 signatures in a few days. The NRL, which uses both stadiums, is threatening to move the NRL Grand Final into state unless the stadiums are rebuilt. It has always amazed me that taxpayers are always asked to foot the bill for new stadiums when our sporting code are always flushed with funds. When are we going to see a finally a government brave enough to say to a sporting body, pay for your own damn stadium? United States President Donald Trump has made the decision to move the United States Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. This fulfills an election commitment from Trump. Previous presidents had also made such a commitment, however, had always reneged, claiming it would be detrimental to the Middle East peace process. Also, no doubt, as we are witnessing, the move has unleashed a fresh wave of violence amongst Palestinians, and Israeli troops have been deployed at various fault lines in the country. So far, no one has been killed. Trump has stated this move signalled a new approach to solving the Arab-Israeli conflict. However, the decision has incurred the criticism of Turkey, Russia, and the European Union. Foreign Minister Julie Bishop has stated Australia will not follow. It is amazing how such a symbolic change can unleash such a period of unrest in a nation. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and check back here again soon to see what is happening right now then.